striving still to truth Good morning and welcome to United Churches of Langley worship service. How wonderful it is to gather with you in this way, to connect, to explore, and to uplift each other in worship. Together with the Langley School District, we have acknowledged four different nations that have been part of this land. And so we gather and we acknowledge that we are on the unceded ancestral land of the Kwantlen, the Matsqui, the Keitsi, and the Semiamu people. As we work and live in this area, we strive to walk, walk on that path of reconciliation and to be stewards of this beautiful and amazing land. Mighty and tender God, voice of the voiceless, power of the powerless, we praise you for your vision of a community of wholeness, a realm of peace in which all who hunger and thirst are nourished, the hurting are healed, and the captive set free. Guide us by your truth and love until we and all your people make manifest your reign of justice and compassion. We pray in the name of your anointed one, our servant king, to whom with you and the spirit, one holy God, be honor, glory, and blessing this day and forevermore. Amen. Yo 
heart in the stream of life Let the pain and the sorrow be washed away In the wave of His mercy As He cries out to Thee We sing Once there was someone who said such amazing things and did such wonderful things that people began to follow him. But they didn't know who he was. So one day they simply had to ask. And Jesus said, I am the light. The reading for today comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks to you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know God so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope of which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us who believe, according to the working of God's great power. God put this power to work in Jesus Christ when God raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but for all the ages to come. And God has put all things under Jesus' feet and has made the Christ the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Many years ago, when I was a student at VST, my daughter was finishing up her studies in early childhood education, and we found ourselves together one November evening in our little tiny townhouse, working and feeling very gloomy. I was writing a paper, she was studying for an exam, and neither of us was at our very best. The phone rang, it was her boyfriend, asking if he could come over, and she had to refuse. She said, we were bogged down with work, and we were having an ugly night together. When she got off the phone, we looked at each other, and I said, you know what we need? And she said, yeah, Dairy Queen Hot Fudge Brownie Delight. So we combed our hair, and we put on some lipstick, and we headed off in the rain for a 20-minute drive to the Dairy Queen. And we ordered our desserts, and we sat there, and we ate the whole thing. In case you've never had one, Hot Fudge Brownie Delight has a three-inch brownie 
in a little plastic dish topped with frozen dessert product and then hot chocolate sauce on top and whipped topping and a maraschino cherry. It is a food with absolutely no nutritious or health benefits whatever. The cherry on top does not count as one of the seven fruits and vegetables in your daily requirement. It is sugar, cholesterol, and saturated fat, and it was delicious that day. It was just the thing to cheer us up because we were feeling overwhelmed with work. It gave us a whole new burst of energy, and we returned home and finished our projects. And about an hour later, it must have been 9 or 9.30 at night, the doorbell rang. It was the boyfriend. And he had a box in his hands. And when we opened it, in the box were two hot fudge brownie delights from Dairy Queen. And he said, I'm not staying, but I know this always makes you feel good, so I thought it would cheer you up. My daughter and I looked at each other because this was kindness on a special scale. Of course, we had to invite him in, and we even offered to share the desserts. We didn't never told him about that until about five years later. But three years later, I officiated at their wedding at VST in the chapel. And last July, they celebrated very quietly their 30th wedding anniversary. This guy is a keeper. Sometimes, life just overflows, and you just don't know what to do about it. There's such richness, and there's such blessing, just when you feel there is nothing left of surprise and delight in your life. So today, we come to the end of the Christian year, the Christian calendar. This last Sunday is called, in some churches, Christ the King Sunday. But we always prefer the reign of Christ. Somehow it sounds a little less royal. No matter, it's a time to elevate Jesus to the heavenly realms, to think of him in glory, seated at the right hand of God, surrounded by saints and angels, and everything is sparkly and golden. I always, however, think of this Sunday as a time to do a life review, a time to ask ourselves, who is this Jesus the Christ for me? How have I grown in understanding and wisdom because of what I have heard in this past year in worship? How have I let the earthly Jesus walk beside me and invade my heart? And what will I do as I continue on my faith journey? The reading that we have this morning is from the letter to the Ephesians, and it talks about God's power at work in Christ, but it's so full of extraordinary poetic expression of prayer and faith that we may feel that we have been overfed with the richness of God's blessings. And you know what? We need this right now. This letter and the sibling letter in Colossians were probably written by one of Paul's followers or disciples. They were addressed mainly to gatherings of Gentiles or families of mixed faith to offer encouragement and education and increase faith in dark times. But what's so amazing about this letter is the lavish vocabulary, the abundance of possibility for joy and celebration. This is Dairy Queen hot fudge brownie delight with three cherries on top, sprinkled with crushed almonds and some coconut and a little glug of really expensive brandy. And there are no calories or cholesterol, or trans fats to worry about. Only God's bountiful, unending love. Just look at what is being said here. A spirit of wisdom and revelation. The eyes of your heart enlightened. The hope to which you are called. The riches of the glorious inheritance among the saints dominion above all other powers, not only now but in the time to come. 
the fullness of the one who fills all in all. This is the reign of Christ. This is what we are offered as we walk step by step with the Jesus who calls us to earthly activities which transform our world. But you may think right now, we're locked in, or maybe we're locked out, of most of our earthly activities. We're lonely. We're suffering. We are separated from those we love. We have so many worries. What's the use of talking about wisdom and revelation, about riches and power and a glorious inheritance among the saints? What's God going to do about the pandemic? Get real. All these fancy words are muffled by masks, blurred by tears, useless as the numbers of people with COVID-19 just keep going up and up. Last week, Karen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan, said, oh, our curve has straightened. It's going straight up. The point is Jesus is with us right now, right here in our suffering. God lives in our experiences, and that is why we need to celebrate the, this year-end time, to look at all the ways in which we have been connected to the holy in this past year and gather strength and determination and patience so that even in the midst of the pandemic, we remain a faithful community of God's people. We have not been stopped in our tracks. We may have slowed down or postponed some programs, but we have been creative in keeping very much alive in our service, our concern for justice, our studies in faith, our praise of God, and our love for one another. We are living in the fullness of Christ every day. And that's what we're just expected to do, because God has enormous trust in our abilities to continue. Jesus calls out the very best in us so that we can offer ourselves to others. Jesus is woven throughout our lives, dancing and inviting us to participate in the mystery and the richness of hope, inheritance, and power. I went on the church website this week, and I made a quick list of what we're doing to participate in the world, sometimes in small groups, sometimes at home. And there is a whole page of it. It's right here. And I made some notes. And it's just, there's, there's pages, lots and lots of things going on. Worship is going on. Music is offered. Pastoral care is active in our Stephen ministry, our Bear ministry, our prayer shawl group, and the newly set up communication vine that connects us with others. And we've had to suspend work in our seniors' homes, but we're, and most of our visiting, but we're making contacts in other ways. We still participate in some of the outdoor community events in Fort Langley that are still going on. And when possible, our church is being used for other groups, for AA and for yoga. During the summer, some groups met outdoors. Now they may be meeting via Zoom. We have seen wonderful growth in our children's programs and youth and young adult events. Even during the pandemic, ways have been found to touch the hearts of younger people. We have started our new social justice program with information on YouTube and Facebook and Nigel's blog. And we've been introduced to new ideas. Perhaps we've been open to new challenges. As people speak about their lives, may the eyes of our hearts be open to see more of God's love. And always, always, we are feeding people through Sources Food Bank and through our connections with other families in need. We are welcoming a new ministry in this month and preparing for the changes that will enrich our lives even more. We have not stopped being the church, and we have been empowered 
by our relationship with the Christ in human form to continue to embody that love in our everyday lives and work. Because God's love for the world is intimate, concrete, and active. God creates and also receives. What we do matters to God, and we can use our own power to do something beautiful. Yeah, our lives overflow with richness and blessing. Of course, for most of us, it's easiest to relate to the Christ in human form, but we have two other considerations to make. One is the view of leadership, of Christ in glory, of Christ on a throne. This is the reign of Christ, who is above us all in power, in wisdom, and in holiness. I know, we're tired. Some days we wake up and we just want to put the pillow over our heads and hope that there's a world outside that doesn't need us today. But we are guided by that part of the Christ who dwells in majesty, which asks that we look at leadership and how we can work effectively to be leaders ourselves, to choose whom to serve and how to do that. In a world of confusion, David Risendale offers this word of comfort. When nations are spinning out of control, it is important to remember that there is a ruler above all who calls us to lives of faith and peace and righteousness. So leadership still has to go on. And the second thing to consider is that this is the last Sunday of the Christian year. And it's followed by Advent, the time when Jesus is not walking among us. He exists only as a gleam in Mary's eye and a hope in her heart. It is a time of waiting and gathering strength, a time to reach for the beyond instead of being stuck in the now a time to expand your vision of time and space so that we can welcome what is to come. This week, just to prepare, each day take one of the expressions of faith from Ephesians and let it sing inside you. Let it be the light in the darkness as our days grow even shorter. Go off your diet of care and concern and have the dessert that is given to you in the passage for today. Look up instead of down and rejoice in the glorious inheritance that you have been given, the greatness of God's power to restore the world, the fullness of the one who fills us all in all. Amen. Worthy is the 
Marlene Aylen, Heather Corscadden, Diana Cudlip, Elaine Porcorny, and Marion Ryan. Today, you are being honoured by the gift of a life membership in the United Church Women. This is presented to you by the UCW of the United Church, Churches of Langley, in appreciation of your valued ministry and the special gifts each of you have given to our church. It will be your privilege now to wear the life membership pin in its design, the star of the women's organization of the Methodist Church, the circle of the Congregational Church, the St. Andrew's Cross of the Presbyterian Church. In 2012, the United Church acknowledged the presence and spirituality of the Aboriginal peoples in the Church, revising the crest. The background colors of the quadrants of the crest now reflect traditional colors of the Aboriginal medical wheel. Each color represents a different color of the world and carries specific teachings. Yellow for the east, black for the south, and red for the west, and white for the north. This symbolizes the rich Christian heritage that is ours and signifies the responsibilities of the UCW and the involvement in the whole work of the United Church. Marlene Aylen, Heather Corscadden, Diane Cudlip, Elaine Porcorny, Marion Ryan. We present the pin and the certificate. May God's richest blessing rest upon you as you continue in service and may God's peace make you perfect in every good work to do what is just. Let us pray. O oh God, creator and sustainer, we come together in gratitude this day. We are thankful for the community of your church and the opportunities to serve you and your people. We ask for your special blessing upon these women who have been received as life members of the United Church Women. Grant them the courage, joy, and love needed during these days. May they help others to respond to you and the needs of your people. Help us all, help us all to a deeper commitment and more joyful ministry. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. These are the women who throughout the ages have led us and helped us to know where we have come from and where we are going the women who have helped us to grow these are the women who joined in the struggle angry and gentle and wise these are the women who called us to action who called us to open our eyes standing before us making us stronger lending their wisdom to help us along sharing a vision sharing a dream touching our thoughts 
touching our lives like a deep flowing stream. Greeting friends. I appreciate the opportunity to share a few words with you this morning about pastoral care. Caring for others and meeting people at places of vulnerability and need, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, is both a privilege and a unique challenge. A pastoral care visit is more than a, hi, how are you, visit. United Churches of Langley has had their own unofficial parish nurse for many years. And today, we offer our thanks in a small way, but with all our hearts, to Shirley McGonigal. For many, many years, she has been the face of the Christ for numerous people in this congregation. Because of her watchfulness and attention, people knew that their church cared for them. Her caring included a person's body, mind, and spirit. And often she would sacrifice even her own health for others. Since her retirement, from the pastoral care team, Shirley still reaches out and cares for many. I am so thankful for all the support she offered me while I served among you. Well done, Shirley. Good and faithful servant. We honor you and celebrate your huge, huge heart, your dedication to others, and your caring spirit. Shalom. This is really unexpected, but I have enjoyed every minute of pastoral care, and I have been doing it in this church since 1970. And um, I must admit that Donna McTaggart was the lady that introduced me to pastoral care. And I thank everybody that worked with me, and I can't thank the family of our church for also being there for me. And how wonderful it is that it is Janice McTaggart who helped make this happen. And so that circle of giving goes on and on, that Donna gifted to you, that beautiful gift of pastoral care and invited you into it, and now in turn her daughter is the one who helped us honor you today. And that's true. It's sort of divine intervention. I say that quite often. Mm -hmm. Things happen, and you don't really re realize it. Some for good and some for bad, but sometimes you do something, and it works out so good because you've done it. Yeah. Good. Anyway. Well, I just know of all the stories that you have shared with me and others have shared with me, that we have been so blessed to have our parish nurse, that advocate who goes with us to appointments, make sure those doctors give the right medicines and the right prescriptions. And so we are so grateful to have had you in our midst and will continue to have you in our midst and being there for us and serving us as a parish nurse would. Thank you. Blessings Sophia. on your journey. These are the women who nurtured our spirits, the ones on whom we can depend. These are the women who gave us their courage, our mentors, our sisters, our friends. Standing before us, making us stronger. Touching our thoughts, touching our lives like a deep flowing stream. These are a few of the women who led us. We know there have been many more. Name but a few, yet we honor them all, those women who went on before.
to help us along, sharing a vision, sharing a dream, touching our thoughts, touching our lives like a deep flowing stream. It is by your generous donations that we are able to continue to help make amazing ministry possible. We are a church with much abundance, abundance of energy, abundance of talent, and abundance of kindness and compassion. Our abundance is due to your continued weekly givings, which support all our ministries and operational supports. Now, there are many ways to give, and hopefully you will find any of these options workable for you. Through givepoint.com slash United Churches of Langley, or by e-transfers to transfer at ucall.ca. You will find these options at the bottom of your screen. Now you can pay by check with a memo attached to it saying, all you call ministries and mission and drop it off in the mailbox at the Murrayville site by the side entrance to the church or you could send it in by post. PAR, pre-authorized remittance, is another way to donate. If you are not already on PAR, send an email to Giovanna in the office and she will send you the forms to get set up for regular pre-authorized giving. And thanks, thanks for your generosity and for this ministry that the United Churches of Langley is able to do out into the community. Friends, earlier this week, people around the world marked the Trans Day of Remembrance. It's a time at which people have vigils every, every year all around the world uh, to remember the trans and gender variant people whose lives were lost that year. A lot of these uh, names come from uh, the global south and a lot of the people killed are trans women of color. There's often a lot of sex workers who face violence. And I wanted us to remember this, uh, but to also connect with our own lives during this time of the prayers of the people. If you'll join me in prayer. God, of all the vast varieties of humankind, help us to move beyond the exclusiveness of either-or mentality to the inclusiveness of an all and every way of thinking. Move us beyond narrow definitions to the mystery and complexity of your infinite creativity and creation. Welcome us into your community and help us remember to welcome all people. Help us to see each person and to offer the encouragement to join us in whatever ways they feel most comfortable. Open our hearts to welcome all people. We lift up those in our minds and on our hearts this day. We lift their names to you, O oh God, and bring before you those who we wish to see welcomed in our church. Help us appreciate the beautiful diversity of all people. Bring us to wholeness that includes all bodies and all sizes and all abilities. Help us to genuinely open our hearts and minds without self-righteousness or fear. Free us from viewing any people as lesser. We lift up our fears to you, O God, that you might dispel them from our hearts and help us to be a more open and welcoming people our community learning and growing to include all who hunger, all in need, and the fullness of each person's being. We lift up those we have wronged, those experiences we play over in our heads, wishing we could have said or done something differently. We ask for your forgiveness, God, that we may let go of these past experiences, 
to live fully in the presence, to allow ourselves to make mistakes, to know that we are loved deeply, no matter our actions or regrets. Holy Spirit, move us out of our comfort and fears, which limit and constrain our hearts. Move us into boldness to challenge fear, hatred, and oppression in all places. Help us to let go of the ways we confuse human rules with your law for us. Inspire us to be ourselves, to help others be themselves, to live our truths boldly. Give us new life to encounter the reign of Christ together in community. Free us to cast aside the ties of stereotypes and hierarchies. Help us to realize a world in which all are loved, valued, safe, and honored. Holy, Beer, Holy Spirit, breathe new life into your churches that we may wholly and fully accept all people in all roles. Gracious and loving God, you made all of humankind in your image. Help us to overcome our anger and our fear of those whose lives move beyond our understanding. Draw us closer to the mystery and complexity of your infinite creativity and creation. Teach us to look upon all of God's children with love and compassion, that we may all live in safety and in peace. Through Jesus Christ, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, it is sacred work to make sure that in this world all have the right to live a safe life and every person is counted as a whole and complete person created in the image of God. Let us do this work with our whole selves. Let us find new ways to act together, especially while we are apart from one another, so that we all come together in our brokenness to make one whole body as a church. Let us come together in Christ and support one another with each of our unique gifts. Go into this world today as a gift and help bring about the reign of Christ as only you can do. Open the eyes 
eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you.